I admit to you that this is going to be one of my favorite parts of this course, because this is where I talk about all the different facilities that Angular provides to modularize your application. And modularizing your application is going to make it so much more easy to maintain, test, extend, document, reuse. It's fantastic. And the way that Angular provides common mechanisms for doing things like providing services, and in particular doing UI components, just really redesigns how we do front-end single-page application development. So I'm really excited about this section. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So let's start where we left off with the app that manages the simple to-do list on the server. And the last thing we did was move the API from the dollar HTTP system to the Angular resource system. So let's take that and refactor that into an API module that we can maintain and test separately and maybe even reuse. That's the kind of thing we're going to focus on in this segment, the modularity through the modules, the directives, the factories. All of these are tools that Angular provides you so that you can make your application more maintainable and more modular. And actually, you've been using them already. Because if you look at app.js, right at the top, Yeoman has created for us the to-do app with some dependencies, like, uh, let's see, the animate system, the cookie system, ng resources, where we bring in our dollar resource friend, ng route, which does routing, which we'll cover in the next segment, ng animate, which does all the, the slick animations and so on. And then in main.html, you can see that we use to-do.app, or index, actually, right here, to-do app in the body. So in the beginning of the course, we were using ng app with a parameter because we didn't need our own app. But once you add dependencies, like we have here with ng resource and the rest, then you need to add the app, which will hang off all of your directives and dependencies and filters and so on and so forth. Now, I don't want to build our API on the app module, the to-do app module. I want to create a new module called to-do and have a factory called API. Now, factories return objects that you can use in your application. I could use a service here. A service is a singleton. A factory is not. Whichever way you want to go, I'm going to choose a factory. So let's start by creating that to do.js. Okay, factories return objects, so let's return an empty one to start. Now we've got to go back to the index.html and include this on our page. So this is the specially common out section that says you buy Yeoman to figure out what scripts are included by the application so that you can use it later when it minifies the script files. You can just add or remove scripts as you like here. So I'm putting it before the app so that we can reference it in the app. Actually, let me go do that. Makes sense to me that we would do that. So let's go back to the app.js and reference it. And that's it. That's all you need to do to reference a new dependency, in this case, the to-do module. So let's have a look on the page. Nothing's going to happen. Refresh just to make sure. Yep. Nothing's happened, so there's no issues with the dependencies or anything like that. If there was, we would get an Angular error message in the console, and we would go debug through that, and the page probably wouldn't render the same way. So we'll go back to the factory and start porting over those functions. Uh, one by one, we'll start with a query function that we'll call get. So here we're bringing in that task system at the top. Then we're doing the query, and we're going to have a callback function that then gets the to-dos as a callback parameter. So let's go and use that now. And that works. So now we ported our existing API, our existing UI, to use our new API. So it, it's probably a good time to talk about Angular's dependency injection. What is dependency injection? It's a big word. It's two words, actually. But it's really not that complicated. First is dependency. Our controller depends on three things, dollar scope, dollar resource, and API, right? 
Can't work without them, so dependent on them. Cool, so that's dependencies. Injection is just means that Angular will find the modules for you and depend on them or and then, then inject them into your function as arguments. You don't need to write code to go to go looking for them. Angular just manages all that for you. So dependency injection is the way that Angular makes it easy to get all the stuff that your code relies or depends on. All right, so let's keep on porting over this stuff. The next thing I want to do is port add. So this is going to take two parameters. The first is the piece of text to add, and then the second is that callback. So let's go and use that. Cool, that works. Let's port over delete. And let's make sure that works. It does. And finally, update. Yep, that's working. Okay. So we're ported, right? Everything looks great. We have our new API. Everything's really cool. But I'm, I'm not enamored of the callback stuff. It's pretty old school. The new school is to use promises. So let's bring in the dollar $Q promise mechanism provided by Angular and change over this API to use promises instead of callbacks. So every time I want to create a promise, I actually have to create that promise. So let's start by doing that. The next thing I do is return it. And then when the promise is done, what you're going to do is call resolving it. Now we don't need a callback anymore, so let's get rid of that. Of course, this isn't going to work because there's no callback mechanism anymore, so let's go import that. So that promise returned an object. That object has a then method on it. And that then method is invoked with whatever you pass in to resolve. So let's go see if that worked. And it did. Much cleaner API, I think. All right, let's port the rest of these. Okay, these are all now ported over. Let's finish porting over these. Great. That looks awesome. Let's just make a few more fix-ups to deal with these JS hint issues. Everything looks good. Okay, so this has been a pretty big walkthrough of how to create a factory with an Angular module, and then how to move from callbacks to promises using the $Q Angular service. In the next segment, we're going to look into directives, which I think are the really fun parts, particularly if you like doing the UI side of things, what they are and how they can help you modularize your UI.